Okay, so today, what's the time? Quarter past. Today, we're going to quickly go through the Gospels again, but today we're going to be talking about the 12 apostles. What does the word apostle mean? Apostle means somebody that is sent. Right? So somebody that is ordained and sent by Jesus. You can ask some questions afterwards. Somebody that's ordained and sent by Jesus is an apostle. But there are 12 special apostles that were handpicked by Jesus to be the closest apostles or closest disciples of the Lord Jesus when he was here. So we're going to look at today at a few of the stories of the apostles and then our activity we're going to learn the different names of the 12 apostles. So at the beginning when Jesus, after he was baptized by John the Baptist, and then he started his ministry after the temptation in the wilderness, he went to go call his disciples. And some of his disciples he met at the Sea of Galilee, they were fishing. And when he saw them, they were washing their nets and cleaning their nets. And he asked them, hey, he wants to get into their boat and go out to the water. Right? So he, he went out onto their boat, onto the water, and he taught the people. And then he said to the fishermen, at the time it was Simon and Andrew and some of the other fishermen that were there, he said to them, hey, throw your nets out to catch some fish. And they said to Jesus, ah, oh, we've been toiling all night, working all night to try and catch fish and we haven't caught anything. But they say, nevertheless, at thy word, well, we're going to try again. So they threw their nets out. And then when they threw their nets out, there's so many fish inside the net that they had to like tell the people to, you know, their companions to come over and help pull the fish out of the, out of the water. It was a miracle. They couldn't catch anything. But when Jesus said, throw your nets into the water, there was a multitude of fish. And you know, there was so much fish, they couldn't pull it in by themselves. They had to get their companions to come over and help. Right, let's see here. It's just so much fish. They're telling them, come over and help. And you know, there was so much fish that it broke their boat. And then Jesus said to them, look at what he says here. It's in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. He saith unto them, Follow me. Does this sound familiar? Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So remember our song, hey guys? So remember our song, I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. That's where the song comes from. So that's why we sang that song. Hey, Mateo. That's why we sang that song this morning. As a reminder, we follow Jesus. He's going to make us fishers of men. So let's read this together. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So he said to them, Hey, from henceforth, you're not going to catch fish anymore. Well, he wants us to catch men by telling them to believe on Jesus. So what are some other stories of the, the disciples? You know, Jesus gave them power to cast out devils when they went to preach the gospel. So here's a picture of them. They're coming back after they've preached the gospel and they've healed people and they come back to Jesus and say, whoa, like even the devils are subject to us when we go out and we preach. And you know what Jesus said to them? Even though they did all these miracles in the name of Jesus, he said, hey, it's good to rejoice at this, but rejoice even more that your names are written in heaven. Isn't that an interesting thing? Sometimes we accomplish great things in this life, even if we do things for God, and God says, hey, we should rejoice in those things, but even more so, we should rejoice if we have believed on Jesus and our names are written in heaven. We know we have eternal life. Look at what he says here in Luke 10, 20, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Hey, this is a picture we saw last week. Remember we talked about the miracles of Jesus? Well, here's another story of the disciples. They were on the sea, right? And the sea was oh, going all crazy. They were getting scared. And then they look out and they see Jesus walking on the water. Oh, they thought it was a ghost, but it was actually Jesus walking on the water. And you know what Peter says? Peter says from the boat, he says to Jesus, if it's you, Jesus... Ask me to come out of the boat and walk on the water to you. And you know what he actually does? Peter gets out of the boat. 
and he walks on the water over to Jesus. But then he starts looking around, he's getting scared and he starts to sink and then he says, Lord, save me. And what did Jesus say? This is Matthew chapter 14, 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Isn't that interesting that they were so close to Jesus, they saw so many miracles that Jesus did, and yet even though they saw and they did all these things, they still doubted sometimes Jesus, you know, that he was who he said he was. And we, we need to learn from their example. We want to be like the disciples, we want to follow Jesus, but we also want to learn from them in terms of we don't want to doubt Jesus. We want to make sure we have full faith in Jesus and his word. Because you know what? Even after Jesus died, and he rose from the dead, some of the disciples still doubted that he did rise from the dead. And one of them was Thomas. So here, this is Thomas looking at the spear that pierced Jesus' side. Because when Jesus rose again from the dead, he appeared to his disciples. But one of them wasn't there. So one of them didn't see Jesus when he had appeared the first time. And he said to, to his friends, to the apostles, he says, hey, unless I can see the print in his hands and feel the, you know, the, the, the hole in his side, I won't believe. So the next week, Jesus actually appears to Thomas and shows him the print in his hands. You see here? Print in his hands and the hole in his side. And you know what Jesus says to Thomas? In John 20, 27, he says, Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. So this is what we want to learn from the apostles. Man, they did great works. They spent so much time with Jesus. Jesus gave them power over devils. But what should we rejoice in more? That we're saved, that we believe on Jesus. And in our Christian life, we don't want to doubt God, we don't want to doubt Jesus. Like Peter doubted Jesus when he started walking across the water. We don't want to be like that. We want to instead, like Jesus said to Thomas, be not faithless, but believing. So I hope you learned a little bit about the apostles this morning. We've got a craft for you. So we want to hopefully have enough time to do that. So today it's a craft. We've been playing games for the last couple of weeks. So today we're going to do a bit of colouring in. So colouring in, we've got the, all the 12 apostles here and we're going to turn them into little, hopefully we've got enough pop sticks, like little pop stick diggers. So who knows all the names of the disciples? We've got, we got Matthew, Thomas, James. So there's two Jameses in, in, uh, in, the, in the 12 apostles. So this, there's one James who's the son of Alphaeus. You have two Simons as well because you have Simon Zelotes as well as Simon Peter. Judas, the brother of James, so this is one Judas, and then we also have another Judas, Judas Iscariot. You guys remember Judas Iscariot? He was the one that betrayed Jesus, right? So he was counted as one of the 12 apostles, but he was the one that betrayed Jesus. Simon Peter, that's the one that walked on the water that we talked about, and obviously these are not exactly how they look, this is just somebody drawing a cartoon of them. We have Andrew, the other James is the brother of John. So you've got John and James, and then you have James, the son of Alphaeus. Philip, and the last one, how do we say this? Bartholomew. We say Bartholomew. Bartholomew. And Bartholomew is also known by another name, Nathaniel. See, so we're going to colour these in, and hopefully this will get you to know the 12 apostles. Okay? All right, let's stand up. We'll go to the back.